Welcome to Choice Classic Radio. Like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and help keep this show alive by donating at choiceclassicradio.com. For more of your favorite old-time radio shows, join us on our companion podcast, Choice Classic Radio, Mystery, Suspense, Dramas, and Horrors, where we bring to you the most mysterious tales that the golden age of radio had to offer. And now, with over 167 episodes broadcast on NBC Radio from 1949 to 1953, we bring to you Dangerous Assignment. Wheaties presents Dangerous Assignment. On stage tonight from Hollywood, Dangerous Assignment, another in the Wheaties big parade of exciting half-hour presentations. Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell. Yeah, danger is my assignment. I get sent to a lot of places I can't even pronounce, but they all spell the same thing. Trouble. But when I walk into the commissioner's office, I don't realize that this assignment is going to involve an innocent little picture postcard that almost turns out to be my death warrant. Morning, Commissioner. Ruth said you had something for me. I do. Here it is, Steve. A plane ticket. Oh, no. Not again so soon. How soon can you get packed? Look, the way you've had me hopping around the world lately, I don't even have anything left to pack. I've got a dirty shirt in practically every city in the world. You're flying to Dublin, Ireland. Oh, fine. I don't even have a necktie there, but why Dublin? You'll be looking for an object about the size of a walnut. I'm flying to Ireland to look for nuts. Look, I can find plenty of them right here at home. This is the size of a walnut. It's a whole lot more valuable. A roll of microfilm, Steve, containing the complete plans of our latest and most improved guided missile. Oh, stolen, huh? Yes, and we think we know who smuggled them out of the country. A man named Ernest Weber. If so, he's got a two-day start on you. He left by plane the day before yesterday. Here's his picture and all the data we have on him. It isn't much, Steve, but we're depending on you to get that microfilm. Well, that's it. You've got your assignment. Good luck. Dangerous assignment will continue in a moment. Now, here is the Wheaties man, Frank Martin. If you've got a job to do tomorrow, folks, get your Wheaties. Sure, Breakfast of Champions is for you, just like it's for Ralph Kiner, pride of the Pittsburgh Pirates. You may not play ball for a living, but whatever your job is tomorrow, you can do it better on a better breakfast. And it's a better breakfast you're starting with Wheaties. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Yes, whole wheat, good, sound, whole wheat, plump and ripe and bursting with vitamins and minerals and protein for your vitality. Your energy, your working power. So tumble the Wheaties out of the package, pour on the milk, put on the fruit, pick up the spoon, and smile. You're eating good to be feeling good. Breakfast of champions for people who are going places. Are you ready? Triumph. See how Wheaties at 7 can help at 11. Yeah, that's my little cinch assignment. Just catch up to a guy who's got two days start on me and isn't going to slow down any. It's Sunday when I get to Dublin. It takes me six hours to trace Weber to a hotel, only to find out he's left for London. In London, they give me a lead that sends me to Brighton. There's a lot of seacoast there, but no Weber. I tickle a cab driver's memory with a few bucks, and he tells me he took Weber to the depot two days ago to catch a train back to London. By now, I know this guy is really trying to cover his trail. I also know I'm losing time fast. For lack of any other leads, I go back to the rooming house in London where Weber had stayed before. Ernest Weber? Why, yes. Yes, he returned here yesterday. Is he here now? Yes, he's in room two, right up front here, just through those drapes. Thanks. Uh, don't bother to tell him I'm here. I want to surprise him. Hello. Oh, I didn't see you in the dark. <laughs> Looking for somebody, old boy? Yeah. Room two. Well, no, no. Quite a coincidence. That's the door I'm standing in front of. So I see. You mind getting out of my way? There's a guy in there I want to see. Weber? 
I wonder why. It doesn't happen to be any of your business. Oh, I think you're mistaken there, old boy. Quite. Yeah? Look, old boy, if you don't get out of my way... So you want to see Weber. I get it. You stand out here and stall me while he goes out the window. Now, look. Why don't you look instead? Here. Hmm? I'll turn on the light for you. Hey. Go ahead. Take a good look. Brother, from ear to ear. Quiet. Which brings me back to my original question. Why did you want to see Weber? Before I answer that, I want to know who's asking it. Name's Barrett. Inspector, that is. I see. Well, as long as we're getting official, you better take a look at my credentials. Hmm. Huh? What ho? Washington? Yeah. Weber smuggled some microfilm out of the States. You know, that throws a little more light on it. How so? A chap named Sutherland turned up dead this afternoon down the coast in Hastings. We found a couple of postcards on Sutherland's body. Decided to take a look at the chap who'd been sending them, so I ran up here and found uh, Weber dead. Could I see those cards? Right, huh? The postcards themselves look innocent enough. Here they are. Thanks. First one was mailed from Dublin. Just arrived. We'll keep you posted. Right. And the second was mailed to Sutherland from London. Like it here, but I'm moving on. We'll let you know when and where I settle down. That sounds like there should be a third card. We found only these two on Sutherland's body. You gave this room a going over. Quiet. No microfilm either on Weber's body or in the room, if that's what you mean. Either Weber's already sold the film, in which case I'm too late, or else he's got it hidden somewhere. I'll have to take my chances on it being hidden. (laughs) I don't envy you your search, old boy. A little like the uh, proverbial needle in the haystack, you know? Yeah. You say this other guy, Sutherland, was killed in a town called Hastings? Right, it's south of here, on the coast. Where was he staying there? A spot called the Sea Cliff Inn. Okay, I think I'll take a run down there and see what I can find out on that end. Oh, good evening, Governor. Hi. Brother. That fog is really thick outside. Oh, it's not really so bad, Governor. I've seen it a lot worse. Uh, Cooper's my name, at your service. Would you like a room? I'd like a little information, Cooper. Information? What about? The guy who got himself killed here today. Mr. Sutherland? Hmm. Oh, poor bloke. Well, there's not really much I can tell you about him, Governor. You know, on a job like this, you can't help picking him up little things here and there, but I never heard this bloke Sutherland say nothing, and to the best of my knowledge, he had no visitors. Oh, hello, Harry. Bit of a thick one outside, Cooper. Here's the afternoon mail. I'll just put it on the desk there. Right, Joe. Well, sorry I can't help you more about your friend Sutherland, Governor. But if you excuse me now, I'll be sorting the mail. Okay. Wait a minute. Uh, what's that? You've got a picture postcard in that stack of mail. Let's see it. Now, see, I can't have you reading the guest's mail. Let me have it. Yeah. From Weber, and it's addressed to Sutherland. Oh, sorry, Governor. I I didn't realize it was sent to your friend. Uh, Let's see. It was sent from Brighton. Yes, that's a picture of the Empire Hotel there. Quite a nice spot, too. The Empire Hotel Brighton as seen through the trees from Providence Point. Good-sized place, isn't it, I... uh... What's the matter? Oh, nothing. Just looking at the picture. Oh, that blinking switchboard again. Uh, Excuse me, Governor. Oh, sure, sure. Take your time, Governor. I slipped the postcard into my pocket and eased quietly out the door while Cooper's on the phone. This is the postcard I've been looking for. The message reads, like it here, guess I'll stay. And on the picture of the hotel, there's an X over one of the windows. So now I'm pretty sure where the microfilm is hidden. Outside, the fog is swirling thicker than ever. I can't see three feet in front of me. I head in the direction the depot's supposed to be, and then I hear steps. I stop. The steps stop. I start again. So do the steps. But in the fog, I can't tell where they're coming from. I stop again. The steps keep coming. Suddenly, a figure looms up, something shiny in his hand. I hit the sidewalk. The knife hits the door behind me. I scramble to my feet, take off after him, but he just melts into the fog. I can't tell which way he went, but I try about three different directions. I spot nothing. Finally, I give up. I manage to find the depot and take the train along the coast to the Empire Hotel in Brighton. Good evening, sir. You wish a room? Yeah. Just sign the register, please. Okay. There's one room in particular I'd like to have. Oh? I stayed here once before several years ago in that room and liked it very much. 
Well, now I'll do my best to arrange it, sir. What room might that be? I don't remember the number, but it's the third room from the north end of the hotel on the third floor. Ah, uh, yes, yes. That'd be 317. Yeah, that's it. How about it? One moment, sir. Now I'll check. Uh, 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 yes, yes, here we are. Ah, uh, I'm sorry, sir, but that room is taken. I see. H- who has it? Uh, Miss uh, Sheila Moore from Dublin. Dublin? Uh, you mind telling me how long ago she checked in? Why, uh, no, no. She checked in only yesterday. Hmm. I don't know how long she's planning to stay here at the Empire, sir. But if uh, if you really would prefer that room, well, now, perhaps you could talk to her and see if she'd be willing to exchange it for another. You know, that's a good idea. See you later. Yes? Well... Miss Moore? Yes. And who are you? Uh, Steve Mitchell. I'd like to talk to you if I could. And what about? Your room here. Oh, it's quite comfortable, thank you. Uh, You don't understand. I'm not working for the hotel. Could I come in for a moment? Well, I I was just uh, leaving for a little walk. Okay, I'll ride down in the elevator with you. All right. And uh, just what is it you want to talk about, Mr. Mitchell? Well... I was wondering if you'd mind taking another room. Oh, and why would I want to do that? Well, you see, I had the room you're staying in a few years back, and I liked it very much. So do I. There's an excellent view from it. Would you consider trading rooms with me? No, I don't think so. Oh, that room seems to mean a lot to you. Strange. I was just thinking it must mean a lot to you. After you. You're from Dublin, aren't you? Yes. On a vacation here? My, but you're a nosy one, aren't you? (laughs) Yeah, sort of. I've always wanted a holiday in Brighton, so now I'm taking one. And uh, will there be any other questions, Mr. Mitchell? Well, the reason I was asking about Dublin, a friend of mine passed through there a few days ago, and I thought you might know him, Ernest Weber. Dublin's a large city, Mr. Mitchell. Weber had an accident in London this afternoon. Serious? Fatal. I'm sorry. Maybe that isn't exactly news to you. Now, if I don't even know the man, it would have to be news, wouldn't it? Well, here we are. You know, if you should reconsider about the room... I don't expect I will. I, uh... What's the matter? A little embarrassing. Order, I'd like to know what is? Are we man and his wife talking to the clerk. A fine thing when a man and his wife can't come down to a shore for a holiday without having a beastly thing like this happen. Well, no, no, no. I, 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 I'm very sorry, Mr. Chomley. I can't understand it. We haven't been troubled by burglars for quite a while. But we have very little of value. Why would burglars pick our room? I can't... Oh, Miss Moore. Hello, Mrs. Chumley. But I thought you had a headache, I, my dear. I'm dead, but it's better now. I, I thought I'd just get a little breath of fresh air before bed. The most dreadful thing has happened, my dear. What do you mean? Well, you remember right after dinner you said you had a headache? Yes, a splitter. And Mrs. Chumley and I had a bit of a stroll along the coast. But when we came back to our room just a few minutes ago, we found it completely ransacked. What? Well, what room are you staying in? Hmm? I, uh, I don't believe I had the pleasure, sir. Oh, 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 this is Mr. Mitchell, Mr. Chomley. Mr. Mitchell just arrived. No. Well, I can't quite see what concern it is of yours, old boy, but we're staying in room 217. That is, we were staying there until this beastly thing happened. We'll have your room put back in order immediately, Mr. Chomley. Uh, Very well. Come along, Martha. We may as well have a spot or something while we're waiting. Room 217. That's the room right under yours, isn't it, Miss Moore? I suppose so. Why? Oh, just wondering. Hey, uh... Were you able to effect an exchange of rooms with Miss Moore, Mr. Mitchell? No, he wasn't. Oh, oh, well, very well. Now, I have another nice room for you, sir. 224. I've taken the liberty of having your luggage sent up there. Okay, I guess that'll have to do. Uh, You care for a drink, Miss Moore? No, thanks. I think I'll be getting back to my room. Oh, change your mind about taking the walk? Uh, Yes. Well, I'll see you around, Sheila. Sheila heads for the elevator, and I fish the picture postcard out of my pocket and take another look. The Empire Hotel, seen through the trees from Providence Point. Up to now, I thought the X on the card was on the window of room 317. But now I see that a branch of a tree on Providence Point partially covers the window of 317 and that the X is under the branch. So, the X could be either under 317 or over 217. And whoever else is looking for that microfilm apparently thinks... 217 to the room. I go up to my own room, still thinking about it. 
reach for the light switch, and just then somebody lowers the boom on me. Steve Mitchell will continue his dangerous assignment in just a moment. You know, the world isn't so tough to face when you've got a good breakfast under your belt, and it doesn't matter what part of the world you're facing either. Farmers can farm better, salesmen can sell better, sawyers can saw better on a better breakfast. And that's what you start when you start with Wheaties. Because here are flakes of whole wheat, whole wheat. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Yes, there's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. That's why I say Wheaties can give so much. The vitamins, the minerals, the wonderful energy of whole wheat. And that's why I say, pull the chair out at the table tomorrow at breakfast time, sit down to a meal that starts with Wheaties, and see if you don't feel the difference in smoother work all morning long. It's the whole wheat nourishment that helps. Of course, it's no fun getting up in the morning to just a batch of vitamins and minerals. Uh Uh-uh, wouldn't that be dull? But it's fun, you bet it is, to lay spoon to crisp, flaky little flakes called Wheaties. Pour on the cold milk, put on the fruit you like best, and eat happy. Breakfast of champions. Breakfast for you. Come on now, you try it. See how Wheaties at 7 can help at 11. And now, back to Dangerous Assignment and Steve Mitchell. Mr. Mitchell, Steve, Steve. Huh? Oh, Sheila. Are you all right? No, but I guess I'll live. What are you doing here in my room? Well, when I got down to my own room, it was all torn apart. What? Yes, and I, I remembered you'd been so anxious to get that room, and I thought you might have had something to do with it. Look. So I came down here to your room, and the door was partway open. I saw you lying here on the floor. Mm-hmm. Speaking of rooms getting torn apart, take a look at this one. Yes. I noticed it as soon as I turned on the light. What a mess. Yeah. Looks like somebody's doing their best to remodel this hotel. First Mr. Chumley's room, then yours, now mine. But what's it all about, Steve? That's a good question, Sheila. Maybe I can give you the answer before long. <laughs> After she's gone, I start putting my room back together again. Then I remember the postcard. It's not in the pocket I put it in. I go through my other pockets, and I find it in one of them. So whoever clouded me on the head a few minutes ago took a look at it then. Well, at this point, I don't know where the microfilm is or who has it. All I'm sure of is that I don't. And then I think about Sheila, quite a girl. She's either real innocent or real smart, and I've got to find out which... Well, the next morning when I go downstairs, I spot Mr. and Mrs. Chumley yes, having breakfast. I drive down the coast today, my dear. The sun's out for a change, and, uh... Good morning. Huh? Oh, Mitchell, isn't it? Yeah. We were introduced last night in the lobby when you reported your room ransacked. Oh, of course, Mr. Mitchell. Won't you sit down? Thanks. Care for a spot of breakfast with us, old boy? No, thanks, but I would like to ask you a couple of questions about Sheila Moore, if you don't mind. <laughs> Not at all. Rather taking your fancy, eh? Yeah, sort of. <laughs> By Jove, I don't blame you. If I were ten years younger myself and, uh, <coughs> uh, well, uh, weren't, of course, already married to the loveliest person in the world. <laughs> <laughs> you got that in just in time, Arthur. She does seem to be a lovely girl, Mr. Mitchell. What is she wanted to know about her? Uh, how long have you known her? Matter of fact, we just met her yesterday afternoon. Rather amusing circumstances, come to think of it. What do you mean? We were just pretending to our room from a stroll when we found her trying to unlock our door. Oh? Yes, you see, her room is directly above ours, and I suppose she got confused. Right? Yeah, sure. We struck up a conversation with her, and it ended by agreeing to have dinner together. But she developed a headache and left us early. And when you returned to your room after that, it had been torn apart? That's right. I say, I don't think that she could have had anything to do with it. There's probably no connection at all, Mr. Chumley. I beg your pardon, Governor. Huh? Uh, could I have a word with you? Yeah, excuse me, Mrs. Chumley. Of course. Expect we'll be seeing you later, old boy. Yeah. Well, oh, I'm not disturbing you, Governor, but you see, I have... You're the hotel clerk I talked to in Hastings yesterday afternoon, aren't you? Right, you are. Cooper's the name. Yeah. What are you doing here in Brighton? Well, you remember I told you then I was coming up here on a vacation. Oh, yeah. But, uh, well, to tell the truth, Governor, I- I've been looking for you. Why? 
Well, li like you told me yesterday, a hotel clerk who keeps his eyes and ears open is liable to pick up things here and there. I get it. What's the bite? Now, uh, I'm not a greedy chap, you know, and how much it's worth, it's up to you. Oh, uh, wait a minute. Well, I haven't told you yet, Governor. Save it until I get back. What yanks me into motion is a glimpse of Sheila Moore with a dressing case under her arm just disappearing out the side door. When I get to the sidewalk, she's down the street renting a bicycle. She starts pedaling down the road that leads along the coast. So, I rent a bicycle and climb aboard. A great way to be chasing a suspect. Well, it's 20 years since I've ridden one of these contraptions, and all the dogs in town seem to agree that now is no time to break the spell. Get out of there. Oh, wait. Get out of there. I finally get out of town with both legs and both wheels. I can see Sheila up ahead of me, and she turns towards the coast. But when I get to the spot, she's disappeared. Then I see her bicycle tracks leading down towards a clump of bushes. I park my velocipede and ease over. Well, is right. Can't a girl even change into a bathing suit without you poking around? A French bathing suit on an Irish girl in England. You know, that's the kind of international cooperation I like, Sheila. You followed me here. Uh-huh. Quite flattering. You are the persistent type, aren't you? I'm glad I was. I didn't realize what a beautiful view there is around here. Oh. Well, I don't really have any complaints about the view from where I stand, either. You know, two nature lovers like us ought to have a lot to talk about. Might have that. Maybe over a drink and some lunch. I would like a swim first, though. <laughs> Go right ahead. Don't mind me. As a matter of fact, I don't. <sighs> it's been a wonderful day, Steve. Swim, lunch, bicycle ride. Yeah. My legs are killing me. Now it's sunset already. Just look out the window. Isn't it beautiful? Water, sun slipping down behind that point over there. Providence Point. Yeah, you do get quite a view from your room here. So now we're talking about views again. Yeah, so it... It's a nice day, Steve. You know, the view's getting better by the moment. View out the window, you mean? Sure. Sure. Now you see why I didn't want to give up this room? Sorry you mentioned that, Sheila. Hmm? Look, this is all very pleasant, but if you're trying to pull a little razzle-dazzle over my eyes, you'd better give up. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know just where you fit into this deal, but it's time we found out. What do you mean? I think you know I've been looking for something. Well, now that's fairly obvious. That's not what I mean. Yeah. Could have been you right from the start. What could have been me? You figured it was hidden in this room. That's why you wouldn't change rooms. What? But you couldn't find it here, so you thought it might be in the room directly below, Chumley's room. You tore it apart looking for it, but it wasn't there. Steve! And you tore your own room apart. There's a cover for yourself. At this point, you figured I might have gotten it, so you slugged me and searched my room. Look, if there was something of value hidden here, and I had gotten it, do you think I'd still be staying around here? That would be stupid. Stupid or awfully smart. I don't know what this is all about, Steve. But all I can say is you certainly seem to have the wrong point of view about me. Yeah. I guess so, Sheila. But if I've got the wrong point of view about you, that means I'm fresh out of leads and I'm licked. I... What's the matter, Steve? Wait a minute. What's wrong? Why are you staring out the window? Yeah. I guess I've had the wrong point of view right from the start. See you later, Sheila. I go outside, get on my trusty bicycle and pedal around the shoreline to Providence Point. It's dark when I get there. I fish the postcard out and take a look, and then I find the right tree. It's on the edge of the cliff over the ocean. I start climbing. The second branch I grab starts to break. I grab another one just in time to keep from taking a long dive. I climb a few feet more, and then I stop and sight along the tree towards the lights of the Empire Hotel across the water. Uh, just a little higher. So I climb some more. <sighs> then I spot it, taped to a branch of the tree, the roll of microfilm. Good work, Governor. Oh. Huh? Just toss it down to me, Governor. Cooper. No, 
hotel clerk from Hastings. Not sure, Governor. Now, just toss down a little bundle down to me, if you will, please. So, your story about having information from me was just a cover to explain your presence here in Brighton. Partly that, Governor. Of course, I did have some information, uh, you know, didn't I? Yeah, I guess it all fits. You found out Weber and Sutherland were involved with the microfilm. That's right. You knocked off both of them to get it, and then you realized the clue was in the postcard that I had swiped. You followed me to Brighton, ransacked a couple of rooms, and then decided to let me figure out the postcard. I did. I realized the X on the card meant this tree, not a hotel room. So you let me lead you to the film. Well, you've got a bit twisted, Governor. I just stepped into the deal in the middle, you might say. And it's time you stepped out. Chumley. No! <gasps> now, Mitchell. How's your charming wife, Chumley? Packing at the moment. We'll be leaving as soon as you give me the microfilm. Looks like I made a little mistake in who was really behind this deal. You tore your own room apart just as a cover. Quite. The blighter Cooper made a big mistake sticking his nose into the deal. But he's safely out of the way now. Toss that film down to me, Mitchell. Sorry. No sale. Now, look, old boy. Let's not be stupid. That film will bring me about 25,000 pounds on the open market. I've already killed three times to get it. And I'm quite capable of picking you out of that tree with one shot. It's a long drop down to the briny, you know. So it is. But if I take the dive, this microfilm goes with me. Where does that leave you? I see. Mitchell, perhaps in that case we could work out some sort of financial agreement by which we could both benefit. There's only one agreement I'm interested in. If you want this microfilm, come up and get it. Oh. Determined to play Tarzan, eh? Well, I think this gun of mine is more than a match for your muscles. Very well. I'm coming up, Mitchell. And this gun will be pointed at you every inch of the way. You will hear the conclusion of Dangerous Assignment in a moment. First, here is the Wheaties man, Frank Martin. Well, tomorrow's Thursday, and you can breeze through your work right up till noon with Wheaties to help. Sure, what Wheaties can do for you every morning, every morning. Wheaties with milk and fruit at breakfast can help send you striding through the morning high, wide, and handsome. Because, listen, there's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Think of that. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. That's a lot of vitamins and minerals and protein for a Wheaties flake to be carrying around, but it's true, just as sure as Wheaties are crisp and sunny and naturally sweet. That's why Wheaties have so much. That's why Wheaties at 7 can help at 11. So get the energy there is in Wheaties. Have some tomorrow. Breakfast of champions. Yourself. See how Wheaties at 7 can help at 11. It's my only chance. The weak branch that almost broke when I climbed the tree. Chumley starts climbing. He reaches the first branch, still holding the gun on me. Then he grabs for the second branch. I dive at him. You can't aim when you're off balance. Get off me. Sorry. I'll take the gun. Here's a hammer lock for you. There. I think that'll keep you nice and neat for a while. What are you going to do? We'll go back and help your wife pack. Of course, your destination will be changed slightly. But most jail cells have some kind of a view from them. And speaking of views, that reminds me. Reminds you of what? Of a pretty gorgeous hunk of scenery I want to resume my study of. Come on. Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell, is written by Bob Reif, with music composed by Basil Adlam and conducted by Ralph Hollenbeck, and is produced and directed by Bill Karn. Dramatic portions were transcribed. And this is the Wheaties man, Frank Martin, inviting you to join us again next Wednesday when Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell embarks on another dangerous assignment on the Wheaties Big Parade. See you then. <laughs> Coming up, the Falcon. Three chimes mean good times on NBC.
That concludes today's episode. We'd like to thank you and remind you to donate at choiceclassicradio.com. Remember, your donations make episodes like this possible.